Hello, welcome to the Children's Science Center Lab. This is our DIY series, and thank you for joining me, Lahiri, as we go through our floating rainbow activity. If you've been to the lab before, then you've probably seen it as it's one of our favorites, um, but we wanted to make a version that you can do at home. So we've got a different couple of different materials in front of us, and what you really need is a graduated cylinder. But wait, do you have graduated cylinders at home? Probably not, so meh, I don't want this. Don't worry, John caught it. All right, so, Normally, we'd use beakers to measure it out to the milliliter. However, what I did was I went ahead and poured it in just regular size cups to the same exact line for all of them. So I'll go take you through our liquids and then we'll get started. But what are we pouring it in? Hmm, a water bottle will do just fine. If you don't have a water bottle, you can use a drinking glass, something that has kind of like a cylinder tube to it so you can pour your liquids in. All right, so I have some oil right here which you can use vegetable oil, cooking oil, all of that. We have some water that is, we just dyed green because we wanted to add color to our floating rainbow. We have some blue glycerin, some orange dish soap, and some clear corn syrup. You probably know corn syrup if you uh, like to make pecan pies. So I wanna talk about the viscosity of these liquids. What, what is that? Well, viscosity kind of, it means how quickly and slowly the liquid moves. So this one, you can see, it, it drips, right? Just It feels like water almost. So if you have water too, you can't really, it's on a spoon so I can't really pour it, but you'll see that it drips and it's, it's not that sticky feeling. Glycerin, let's see, has a little thicker consistency to it. So it has a higher viscosity than water. Dish soap too has a similar consistency and viscosity to glycerin. And then let's check out our corn syrup. Oh. Our corn syrup has an th even thicker viscosity, similar to like honey or molasses. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour these liquids in one by one in kind of a specific order. We're gonna guess and see what happens when we pour them in. Are they gonna mix together? Are they gonna change colors? What are they gonna do? So I'm gonna start with my oil. Hmm, if I pour this in there, it might get a little messy. I think I need a funnel, right? There you go. All right, so. I'm gonna pour the oil in just like that. Great, okay. So in our water bottle right now is just oil, right? Actually, there's also air in this water bottle. So there are two things, air and oil. Now, when I pour the green water, do you think that the water is gonna mix with the oil, that it's gonna be on, lay on top of the oil or underneath it? Let's find out. Okay, let's give it a second to settle and see what happens. But if you look closely, the water went underneath the oil. All right, and they don't seem to be mixing together at all. So fun fact is that oil and water don't mix. If you ever bake at home with your family, you, um, when you mix those ingredients, you'll notice that they don't like mixing together. And that is something that is called hydrophobic. All right, so we have our water, oil. Next up is going to be our glycerin. All right. I'm gonna say that it's gonna be on top of this because I'm pouring on top of the liquid. So let's find out. All right, what a nice slow pour. Huh, that went to the bottom as well. Interesting. Okay, so now we have our air, our oil, our water, and our blue glycerin. All right, I'm gonna pour, let's see, I'm gonna pour the dish soap next. Actually, no, I changed my mind. We're gonna do corn syrup next. All right, remember this is a little thicker, so I'm gonna keep my stir stick in there so I can scoop it all out. It might take a little bit longer than the other ones because see how slowly that one pours? So the neat thing about this activity, you can use this in anything. You don't have to use a water bottle. Like I said, you can use a drinking glass. And you don't have to even use these liquids. You can try it out with honey. You can try it out with syrups, maybe. You can try it out, you can add other, like if you have rubbing alcohol at home, obviously ask your parents for permission first. Okay, I think that's about all I can get out from this one. Whew, that is sticky. I'm glad I'm not touching that with my hands. Whew. Where did that go? That was clear, right, compared to the other liquids? 
So you can see that settled all the way at the bottom too. Interesting. I'm really amazed at how these liquids are not mixing when I pour them in there. So let's see what happens with our last one, our orange dish, dish soap. almost swirl factor effect to it with the with the oil and the water because when you you know we're washing dishes you use water and soap and they mix together make bubbles so it's kind of happening but it's still separating out it's still forming its own layer there so how is that happening right we're talking about density when you're looking at different liquids like this each of these liquids has a different density so that means how much stuff is inside of them how much stuff can be packed inside so oil is less dense there's not a lot of things so it's like a little lighter so it can come up to the top versus corn syrup that has many more things packed into it which brings it down to the bottom and then there's our glycerin our dish soap and our water then our oil and then of course we talked about our air here so I was mentioning different things you can use you can try syrup you can try different types of oil there's the opportunities are endless you can raid your pantry and find out what you can do to make your own floating rainbow at home so thank you for joining us here today at the Children's Science Center Lab. Have fun.